approach to life. So today, my topic, essential topic, is going to be about my preferred uh, conversation, and it's uh, regarding menopause and how to approach the menopause, especially that will be useful for women that are already transitioning to or are already in menopause. They are already uh, um, had 12 months that didn't have any um, period, and then they are already living this uh, special, amazing stage in their lives. And I am here. I'm, I'm actually one of those. I'm a post-menopause woman. So I have gone through all these situations before. So this is part of my life. And I think um, the fact that we will be able to uh, share experiences is amazing. So I've prepared a presentation that I will be um, sharing with you here. And I hope um, you'll be able to see it uh, just in a few minutes. I'm just getting ready. I want to make sure that you do have access to that too. So let me share my screen. And uh, once I share my screen, you will see me somewhere in the corner. I hope so. And you see, I, I don't think I have anybody um, live yet. But if whenever you get live, please let me know. Here is my presentation. And I will share this uh, video also for you to look at it afterwards. So let me just go ahead and make this. Um, so I'll be talking about menopause um, and how some of us go through this period uh, thinking that this is taking a stock of uh, your health at midlife. And actually, this is a normal process. It's a normal process that is just an opportunity for you to understand that all stages in your life have a beautiful purpose of, for your growth and your um, future and your own perspective with life. It's just part of your growth and it's part of your normal, natural course of life. But definitely there are some stuff happening during the transition that are not as good as we would like them to be. So that's why I'm, I've prepared this presentation and I hope that uh, the information that I have for, uh, to share with you will be useful. Just a little bit about myself and how, why I'm talking about these topics. I am a physician, graduated in 1991 with uh, over 28 years of experience. Uh, mainly with uh, public health programs, implementation, evaluation. I've been engaged in interventions that uh, with the purpose of improving the quality of life of the community. But that was back in my country. In 2014, I decided to uh, immigrate to this country to join my family who has been here for many years and uh, start from scratch. So that was a huge adventure, a big decision from my side. But um, one thing I want to share with you is that I took the decision to immigrate, which means that I knew that things will change, that there will be lots of challenges that I, have to, I, I will have to face, and I had to face many. I'm still facing many of them, especially this new transition to um, a new work that is finally on my, um, I believe that is finally that I, I found my um, real mission in life. And I feel so, so happy. I feel so um, engaged. I, I feel that this finally is the response to my, um, is the plan that God had for me. So here I am. And I, um, I am the founder and owner of Dr. Gala Health Coaching LLC. I still work for, um, I, I'm working and proud of that. I've been, you know, um, blessed to have the opportunity to work for the city of Houston Health Department. I work with amazing people, amazing teams that are day by day fighting the fight to, um, make uh, health uh, a good that is in hands of all the community. And I'm part of that team as well. 
I love the work they do, and I love the fact that I've been able to uh, be part of this team and for at least four years, and I hope continue to um, be part of that, that team as well. So my company is um, a little bit more uh, focused on the personal point of view, uh, kind of a, the approach of one uh, coaching, and that will be uh, specifically for, as I mentioned before, for women 40 and over that are struggling with the symptoms of menopause and other uh, health issues of the midlife and helping them uh, really in find the solutions to uh, the, all those issues. So that said, I am um, introducing this time tea with Angie for every Friday at 1.30, and it's actually my lunch time. I'll be using this hour, because I have only an hour, to have this tea with you. Okay, and the tea that I'm having today is green tea jasmine. Is jasmine and is a very nice tea. It's actually uh, it's very healthy. is um, is kind of um, refreshing um, for this time. And uh, you know, in Houston, we don't have like a winter time, but we have some sort of um, cold weather sometimes. And it's also uh, calm, calming. I have to confess today. I'm full of nerves here because it's my very first time that I'm trying to do the best I can. And the challenge, the biggest challenge is that I provide in this um, conversation in English. And my daughter is taking the test today to become a, um, a certified and licensed, licensed realtor. And my thoughts and my positive vibes are with her. So... Let's begin, and here it is. We will be talking about um, things that are uh, you are facing while transitioning or after, even after you have arrived to menopause. There are many things that we kind of worry when we get to this point. And first of all is that we start to complain about, oh my God, I'm getting, I'm getting old. What should I do? My goodness, I don't want to get old. And I understand that because nobody wants to see their years of youth and joy and happiness um, go on and, and, and arrive to old years. So I, um, I want to tell you something. My perspective in life is that uh, and my, I would say we call those, um, um, oh my God, uh, I forgot in that. But anyways, that happens all the time when you are nervous and trying to bring up things um, to your mind. I hope some of you can remind me. What about you, Michelle? Are you connected? If you are connected, please provide that paradigm. Oh my gosh. Yes, exactly. Paradigm. One of the paradigms that I really um, believe is that, you know, there are challenges in life always, but we have to believe, we should believe and embrace that each challenge is the best gift of your life. Why? Because once you face your challenges, once you've uh, had the victory, once you are savoring the, um, the fact that you have overcome those challenges gives you the opportunity to share with others and provide them an opportunity to see that their challenges are beatable, that they are absolutely just an opportunity to make a best, uh, to come to a best direction of yourself. So here are some challenges that you can't control. And when you can't control, they're just there as part of the circumstances where you are or you have to walk through in order to face those other challenges that you can take care of. And I'm talking about age, for example, maybe the family medical history that you had, like say, let's say um, there are some predisposing factors that will uh, are in your family that will make you more sensi um, sensitive to 
um, the possibility of suffering some um, conditions or having some situations happening in your life. So you cannot take control of that. Ethnicity is another one. I'm sorry, it's kind of a moved in the um, in, in the slide, but it's uh, ethnicity is another one. And most of the time, I've heard some comments, especially in the scientific literature, which counts the frequency that uh, some events happened in specific uh, groups of population. That they will say, "Oh, this ethnic group is more um, is more likely to suffer from." these in such and such conditions and um, that's what places them in a higher group high, higher risk group i would tell you something some um, ethnic groups have a specific circumstances that have nothing to do with their ethnicity but with this with the environment or the uh, situations that they have had to um, face because of their geographical location maybe because of their social conditions or economic conditions and even with um, some situations that society um, is placing in their lives that makes them more um, uh, sensitive to those conditions. So that said, these are just a few examples, but there's some stuff that you definitely can control and you'll be able to tackle those uh, factors and make sure that your health takes other um, pathways. Like for example, you can control the way you eat. You can control exactly what you eat and how you relate with, um, the, with food. Sometimes those behaviors have been programmed along your life and it's hard to um, cope with them. But there, that is why health coaching is an opportunity for you. That is why um, a, we are here to provide an advice to you on how to manage those behaviors, how to uh, control your relationship with food, and how you can um, improve all those in habits and turn those into behaviors that will um, act in on favor uh, to favor your uh, health. Smoking is another one. Keep a physical activity, keep moving, even, um, and not, I'm not saying that alcohol, it, I mean, it's depending on your relationship with alcohol, that will be the, the impact. But definitely you can have one single cup of uh, an amazing, fantastic wine, and that will be something to relax and feel great, but just one. <laughs> so um, one thing that we must understand that we have to deal with is the fact that um, as we age, some um, health risks are more evident in our lives, mostly due to the, um, uh, the fact that our estrogen levels are reduced along with aging. So because of the um, scientific information and evidences outside there in, in, in the uh, medical sciences have already proved um, that uh, diseases and conditions that in, are, start to install in your life with aging. Of course, all these conditions are mediated by multiple factors that were taking the toll during your life. And that toll is, kind of a, is going to express itself when you arrive to a certain age. And those um, uh, health issues, according to the CDC publication on what are the first, co the first causes of death in the population are some of them mentioned here, like cardiovascular disease is one of the highest um, contributors to death toll in the, in, in, in the United States and almost is reflected in every state of the country, um, of the nation. And that is also reflected in many other countries in the world, like in especially countries that have been able to kind of manage the situation with infectious diseases that in sometimes a lot of years ago were the main causes of death. Stroke is another one, lung cancer, Alzheimer's disease, breast cancer, 
um, there are specific communities that are highly um, sensitive to these situations, including our Latina community in, in breast cancer. Diabetes. Diabetes is considered currently um, an epidemic that is in is growing all the time. And the main cause of diabetes, because it's uh, so diabetes type two is the main form of diabetes that is outside there in the community, is because of the diet. It's mainly because of that. There's some um, conditions or, or some situations related with the family history that might kind of influence the situation. But in my um, logical explanation that I usually take when I'm discussing to my, with myself, why is this happening? It's because the program is start in your home with your family. Sometimes everything, every uh, programmed um, relationship with food that has been in place in your family for years and years, and that is like cultural, um, um, you know, uh, traditions, traditional food has been there for many years, many generations, and it's going from one family to the other. Some people are more uh, sensitive in the way they respond to those uh, stimulations, uh, uh, stimulants from uh, food and have different responses, of course. But yes, that is a, actually one of the factors, having a family history. But your relationship with food is uh, definitely has also proven to be uh, the best method to control and um, um, slow down the um, uh, you know onset of diabetes, uh, even the onset of pre-diabetes. And but um, and there is a trend actually that is uh, coming from functional medicine that this situation is perfectly calm, uh, you can keep this situation under control. Influenza and pneumonia, uh, although those both, uh, I mean, um, although the origins of these um, conditions are not necessarily um, those uh, related with um, the majority of chronic conditions, because there is an agent, there is a transmission occurring among people is another uh, cause of that. Anemia, sedentary lifestyle is part of all these uh, picture, all, all, all part of the equation and some other factors. However, there are ways to control situation. There are approaches and there are approaches and strategies that we can implement in our lives to control um, our, um, have a healthier life even when we are aging. And that is applicable to all of us ladies. You, one thing that I am always trying to um, um, share with you is that you are responsible for your health. Yes, sometimes we put aside our needs, especially our health needs, a little bit of my tea. Oh, by the way, this cup is from San Diego where I had a transformational um, retreat recently. And I loved it so much that I, I would like to have this cup with me all the time, meaning that I say yes to the revolution. And I want you to say yes to the revolution as well. You know, you are responsible for your health. Yes, sometimes you are responsible for the health of your family. But what if your health would not allow you to take care of others? So I call you, your, um, I would like to throw this to you. Take care of yourself and you'll be able to take care of others. So here are some um, 10 steps that I'm recommending for a longer and healthier life. First, if you smoke, stop it. I know that um, there are a few things you can do uh, that will have such immediate and lasting benefits as giving up smoking. It is not easy. I know, especially when you've been for a long time using these, um, you've been smoking. And some people will tell you, oh, you can do it. Yes, you can, but sometimes you need help to do it. Let me tell you something. Just to mention some of the benefits of a stopping smoking in 20 minutes, in 20 minutes, 
after you um, stop smoking, your heart rate will fall. By the next day, you will have cleared the excess carbon monoxide from your blood. Can you imagine? You started to feel and receive benefits in your body just after stopping smoking. And not only stopping smoking by yourself, but making sure that people that's around you do not smoke around you because then you become a passive smoker as well. So another, um, another benefit that I can mention is within months, you'll be breathing more easily and coughing much less. Have you heard your voice? I wish I will give you this recommendation. You can do this exercise. Record your voice today. If you decide to stop smoking, to quit smoking today, and this will be your um, motivating factor, your big motivating factor, record your voice today and say to yourself in front of the mirror, looking at yourself, hey, we are going to stop smoking today. That is you here talking to that future you there in the mirror. We will stop smoking today. Can you hear that voice coming out from me? I will see that voice within just a few months absolutely changed. What about singing? Maybe we will be able to sing again. And look, monitor yourself. Do that again and again and record yourself again. Don't listen to your own voice and recordings until the time has gone on. Maybe within a month, <clears throat> and I'm sorry for that. <clears throat> Maybe within a month, check on that and see the difference. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's because of this speaking too much. I had pneumonia like six, three or four months ago, and this coughing is coming back and back again, especially when I feel uh, stressed like today. I don't smoke. <laughs> it's funny <coughs> that I've been talking about um, reducing cough with, with smoking. Yes, you know, it's, it's so unfortunate that when you go through such a challenge like a pneumonia, and it was my first time in my life um, that I had that situation, it will last uh, long. Um, that uncomfortable cough coming back in reminding you that you had to go through that. So your lungs are still recovering from um, the situation that affected um, them so badly uh, not long ago. So over the years, your risk for lung cancer, stroke, and heart disease will drop by at least 50%. <laughs> Even if you have no idea what is your current risk for those conditions, just knowing that your risk will be reduced, whichever you have, will be reduced by 50%, is amazing. But again, there are many other um, uh, you know, benefits. By the way, by the way, just to be patient. Even if you don't smoke and you have someone in your family that does, Please tell them about these benefits and help them. Help them walk their difficulties to get these, uh, to quit this from their lives. Be patient. You know why? Because it is not easy for anybody. Only 4% to 7% of smokers are able to quit without AIDS, like nicotine replacement products or medical help. And only one quarter to one third who use any quit smoking medicine stay smoke free for more than six months. You know what, is, what does it mean? That you don't have the system, you don't have the support, and sometimes you don't have the adequate, um, um, you know, accountability by your side. That person that will cheer you to continue, to keep on going. I am here as a health coach to do that for you. But if you're not ready to go um, to request the help of a health coach and you have the opportunity to help others, do it. Always having that into account. 
So let's go to the next one. And I don't want to take longer than what you have planned for today. What about keeping moving? Lack of physical activity is an independent risk factor for nearly all of the diseases that are most likely to kill or disable any person. Yes. Most of those diseases that were mentioned at the beginning of this part in the presentation are related with the lack of physical activity. And lack of physical activity is reflected in many different ways. You may find someone saying, hey, I don't know how I got to this point with this um, X condition when I am a person that every single day of my life, I move from this place to my work biking. I've been biking for 10 years and I don't lose not a pound. I've been struggling with losing weight. <laughs> Actually, that biking is not anymore your uh, physical challenge. You know why? Because it's a routine. It's just part of your behavior. It's a good one, by the way. If you had that in your life, that is already an advantage on your side. You keep using it, but add some other physical activities that are not part of your routine. You know why? Because resistance is one of the most, um, one of the available behaviors that people have in their life. You know, when you become used to something, that something, so, and there's another paradigm. The way you do things is, Many things is the way you do everything. <laughs> it's kind of confusing. But yes, that is a routine in your life. And a routine in your life might be every, everything else that is also affecting your life, part of that same routine. So change it. Add another type of movement. Maybe running, maybe walking. If you are biking every single day from your home to your work, then you need to add another type of activity. Okay, let's go about that. I, um, there are many um, diseases that have been already um, proved, have proved that the fact that you added any level of physical activity that will um, increase with time will have an amazing impact in your health. It, for example, cancer. <clears throat> Exercise reduces the risk of cancers of the colon, breast, and endometrium. By helping you attain a healthy weight, exercise also lessens your risk for other cancers in which obesity is the main factor. And you can read uh, or look in the literature or find out uh, with some of the authorities in health that will talk to you about that. Diabetes. You know, exercise bears excess weight, modestly lowers blood sugar levels, and boosts sensitivity to insulin, reducing your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. But even if you go deeper, the exercise is another mechanism to increase the production of insulin by your, uh, uh, in your body. And we can talk about that in another See, in another uh, live event, but I, I will definitely come back to that and talk a little bit more about that. Arthritis. Exercise helps protect joints from, um, by easing swelling, pain, and fatigue, and by keeping cartilage, um, cartilage, uh, cartilage, sorry, I kind of lost that word. Anyways, you understand your joints will be healthier by keeping them moving because they will be trained every day. They'll produce that um, substance that will keep it um, hydrated or at least lubricated, lubricated. Okay, so um, let's go to the third one. And the third one is one of our specialties. If you have the opportunity to talk to a health coach, about how to adopt a healthy eating, eating um, pattern, please do it. You know why? Because most people, and that is 
I guess around 92% in is not yes, in and out is actually facts. 92% of people that have been following a diet that they initiated with a lot of engagement and really excited, they don't keep it after a certain time. Sustainability is an issue. And they get back to their normal habits. And normal is not necessarily what we need or what we wish to call it, but at least it's part of your life. Is that difference in your life that does it? You don't think you don't have to think about being different. Another paradigm, by the way. So if you need you will need a system, you will need a support, a people supporting you. Have you just Think about it. When you started your keto diet, you had a party with your um, <laughs> Latino community, Mexicans, my, might be Cubans, Puerto Rican, or whomever, and they will tell you, hey, how are you not going to taste these frijoles colorados or frijoles negros? How are you not going to eat my uh, mofongo or maybe the arroz con gandule? Or maybe my tortillas. Huh. One day a year, <laughs> it doesn't make any change. I mean, take it. We, you, you are in a party. Enjoy with us. It, it's not that they don't want us to be successful on achieving our goals. It's just that from love, that becomes part. And especially depending on your reaction, it will become a way for you to self sabotage your success so but that is definitely <clears throat> when you adopt a healthy eating pattern is not following a diet it's just embracing a new lifestyle that will stay forever in your life is when i repeat again that one that I love again a lot is like when you are different without having to think about being different. Another paradigm. My practice is full of paradigms. Do you notice that I'm feeling better now? I, I feel that I'm getting into that. So here I have a, and actually you can find that from the Ministry of, uh, from the Agriculture uh, Department. Uh, but this is all, this is amazing. This was made at Harvard University the School of Public Health, here is the healthy eating plate. This is a recommendation for you. I will make this uh, presentation available to you all. I didn't notice that anyone is, is connected, but anyways, you have this, um, uh, this, this is gonna be available in our uh, uh, Facebook page. So let's go to the fourth. The fourth, be aware of your body mass, um, uh, mass index. So, what does it um, what does it mean? You know, um, body mass index uses your weight and age to gauge whether you are normal weight, overweight, or obese. And the thing is that sometimes, even when you look from outside, like very fit, and that you are not having any issues with weight or obesity, you might be surprised when you definitely use. Um, a measure that is reflective of what is going on in your body. So excess body weight increases your risk for more than 50 different health problems, and I kind of uh, went through that uh, before. These conditions include some of the leading causes of death, and I've mentioned some of them. Okay, so what you can find your body mass index, mass index by, um, you calculate that by entering your height and weight, into the calculator, or um, and then there's some specific numbers that you have to remember, like a body mass, a mass index of 18.5 to 24.9 is considered a normal weight. Once you reach 25, you are overweight, and anything 30 and higher is obese. Now, there are some changes happening in uh, currently in, that is backed by science and evidences that um, the body mass index is uh, not necessarily as reflective of the distribution of uh, fats in your body. So I would definitely um, search for more information that 
will feed onto that new uh, trend in, in health that would definitely um, help you understand better how the body mass index um, will help you to kind of uh, be aware of, the, of your situation. It is, a still be, it is a still used as the main indicator of your uh, status in regard to obesity. So the number five is, again, I'm not telling you that it's not good to have a margarita, especially uh, somewhere in the spring. You get a glass of margarita and you will just enjoy it. I mean, having um, your friends and enjoying them. Okay, I prefer wine in my side, but uh, you know, there are some things that are, are there because, um, uh, and they produce joy and they are part of your life. I'm not saying that you just get rid of them, but be aware of only at least one, one glass of margarita. Why you need more? Enjoy the flavors, enjoy the colors, and take your time to have a blessing and nice conversation with your friends. Maybe dance in between, not leaving it behind. But um, yes, leave the glass, but only one. Uh, we usually toast to good health for good reason. And enjoy those moments. Enjoy those moments with family and friends. Um, even moderate drinking has been associated with reduced risk uh, for heart disease and death uh, from all causes. But you know, um, another thing that is part of our society today is driving under the effects of alcohol. So it's been, is actually in our younger population, one of the main um, causes of accidents, uh, the fact that someone has been driving uh, under the effects of alcohol. So for, for women, the benefits of alcohol vanish with a, with a second drink. This is something I want you to remember. At more than one drink a day, you increase your risk of cancers of the breast, head, and neck, and also your digestive system. So number six, don't run up a sleep debt. Yes, medical evidence suggests that for optimum health and function, the average adult should get seven to nine hours of a sleep every single day. Please be aware of your sleep needs. Don't take a talk from that. And I am talking from my own experience. I, um, you know, I'm engaged uh, after being certified as a health coach with uh, the National Society of Health Coaches. I'm also with the Health Coach Institute, which is the best coaching program ever. I found in any ways, I feel that this has been so transforming for my life and for everything that I, I do um, in, in work and in, with my relationships, with everything. I'm also engaged in a training program uh, to become a master of transformation. So I'm in my master program as well. And um, I found myself at some point uh, during my studies really taking a big toll of my sleep time. I was not sleeping. I was just literally going to bed at 4 a.m. and getting to sleep one and a half hours because I had to wake up again and go to my work. I'm sorry. So that was really not uh, benefiting me in any ways. And I am very grateful that in one of our amazing coaching um, master coach sessions with Bill Warren, one of the things that he recommended me was, yes, I know you want to keep um, your, pa uh, your paths with all the things that you have at the same time, but there's one thing you cannot do, and that is take the toll from your sleep. Please stop your activities, make a good deal out of your schedule, organizing it, and make sure that you do have um, your rest. Take charge of your health. You know what? We, especially women, have one uh, terrible um, behavior, and that is procrastinating, especially those that have immigrated like me, myself, and I know a lot of uh, families and friends that are doing the same, is, oh my God, I will do the impossible not to go to uh, have a checkup because I have to pay for that. There are many opportunities. There are amazing opportunities for you 
that will give you the checkup annually and maybe sometimes like two times a year and you still don't have to expend a lot of money. One of those is telemedicine. I can offer, I actually have the opportunity to partner with telemedicine and make it available for a very, very short, um, low uh, cost, which is not substitute uh, from having your insurance because that is important to have backup just in case something happened. But we are so not, so, so the information we have is not managed, managed appropriately. And I'm encouraging you to find ways, but just take care of your health. Without health, you will not be able to achieve your dreams. And one way to make sure that your health is really taken care of is by really focusing on checking up, just monitoring your health. Okay. There are many, um, at Made Life and Beyond, good health is increasingly depending on successful collaboration with your doctors, with your coaches, with um, some ways that you can find in order to follow up on your health. So if you are prescribed medications, for example, take them as directed. Don't try from the, uh, stray from the designed dosage without talking to your doctor. If you have difficulties, come back and talk to them. And if you need some support, if you need a system that will make sure that your life is, or your health is taken care appropriately, and health includes everything, especially that balance between your physical health, your mental health, and the environment where you move. Okay? So here I am as a health coach, and I'm offering you the opportunity, I mean, to, I really, I ask you to give me the opportunity to support you and see the amazing results we can get together. Stay connected is my point. Oh, I just went through uh, this part is the number seven, take care of your health, charge of your health, and going to um, do the routine screening test for you. There is a list that has been recommended for women 50 and over, and most of them are 100% covered by insurance. But if you don't have insurance, there are ways you can access to those screening testing, not even having to uh, pay huge amounts of money. Please, I recommend you get in touch, ask. There are ways to get to know, uh, to really be informed and aware of what your opportunities and possibilities are. Stay connected with your family. When you start aging, there are many things that will impact your minds, your mindset, your um, stability in terms of your emotions, of your relationships. And I have a conversation, pen, pending conversation about relationships. But I'm going to tell you, you, there will be a time when you will feel that um, need for your past years when your children were just running around and making sound all in the, in the whole house, that is when you start uh, uh, entering the syndrome of, of, uh, of the empty nest. Don't let it come. Stay connected with your significant one. If there is, there is always a significant one person, your best friend, your friends from the school, from the university, Get in touch with people. I will be sharing some exercises sometimes that will help you establish and get connected to people. Establish new relationships that are just friendship relationships. You know, there is one exercise that I love a lot. It's just having a conversation with a stranger. What if you try to do that? Maybe you go to your store, uh, the store where you do your shopping, and you find someone there that you would like to talk to, speak to that person. Don't be afraid. You don't offend anybody by talking, especially if you approach people with respect and being nice, genuinely, you know? It's so important to be genuinely yourself. So stay connected. Say no to stress. And that is not easy again. 
we all have a stress in our lives and that's something you cannot avoid but there is a way you can take control of everything it's not the same not suffering from stress than taking control of it you are the owner of your of your mind you are the owner of your mindset so um yes definitely um by the way, I, I want to share this with you. Having one minute. If you have one minute, place your hand just beneath your um, navel so you can feel the general rise. Um, I'm sorry. No, let me just do something. Sometimes even having a breathing um, relationship with your own breathe, rhythm, lower your stress level. I have my watch programs so that um, within certain amount of time sometimes every hour it will give me an alarm on hey let's take one minute to breathe and that will make the sound like I'm in I'm just inhaling and I will repeat that for a whole minute it will bring you peace, relief. It will make sure that your stress level will go down. Let's see what is the number 10, because we are almost over time already, and I have to go back to my uh, normal work. So shy away from supplements. Yes, some people just say, okay, I don't need to do that, because anyways, I am taking these pills, I am taking these pills that will help me lose weight. How long are you going to sustain that? But not only that, remember um, the benefits of multivitamins remain uncertain. First, because you're just taking out the capacity that your body has been given, and that is a gift that we have. Our body is designed in such a way so that it is so perfect it will generate everything that it needs given the fact that you are providing the nutrients it needs to do so if you start to su supply supply what your body needs and not trying to stick to a lifestyle that will uh, generate help your body to generate those nutrients by itself you are limiting your own body so what i would um, suggest and i'm not saying that it's bad to have supplements that have been recommended to you especially by your doctor or maybe you have coach that has the um the training and has the cap the the, 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 the the license or the certification to do so like the nutrition um, licensed person, then I would definitely not advise you to self, uh, self, uh, self select the nutrients or the supplements that you'll be taking because you don't know what is your body needs. And then those decisions are complicated. So, um, actually, research suggests that excessive use of supplements may be harmful for your body. I would um, recommend to um, talk about this with your health coach, with your doctor, with your nutritionist, and they will be ready to provide you with the right advice. So this is um, mainly my conversation today. The opportunity to send your questions is open. I want you to know that these Live events will be happening every Friday at 1.30. Every Friday, and I will have my cup of tea with me. Uh, by the way, this helped me a lot with that coffee event that I had in the middle of our conversation. I'm going to take another one. Mm. Ah, it's so good. It's a little bit cold already because it's been <laughs> a long time. So thank you so much for attending this um, event. I am here, I am open for coaching you if you need it. Please get in touch with me, find out what are your um, possibilities. 
I invite you, and I will uh, share my link in this um, under this uh, video when I share it. Please contact me. Join to my community, the fabulous Net Women's Network. The Fabulous Women Network is a space for you to share your own experiences. What has happened in your life? In your life, if you are a woman that uh, is uh, is already um, postmenopausal and you want to share with your friends how do you manage all these in like the hot flashes, for example, that would be amazing. We need to share one with an, with another um, with the other women, and we support supporting each other. We just strengthen. We just empower each other. So you are very welcome to join my community. You are very welcome to join my, my group in, a, in at, um, with Dr. Gala Health Coaching LLC. That's a group. And I will share that uh, link as well. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for you. If you are just watching this uh, video afterwards, I am very grateful for your um, sharing. I would love you to share. And um, yes, I will be, um, I'll be coming next Friday. So I hope to see you. Have a nice, amazing, and blessed weekend. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay, let me see.